Hi, I'm, I'm Jackie Bent and... Uh, I'm Simon Curtis. Cool. I came in this weekend with an idea that I've been working on for a little while called Adodo, the interactive community map, which will connect communities one click at a time. If you think of the word crisis, what do you think of? You wouldn't be on your own if you thought of something like the tsunami or the refugee situation at the moment. Something that affects thousands of people in any one given moment at one time. And yet, across the UK, and especially as we're in Bristol, across Bristol at this moment, there are hundreds of people who are facing a crisis or getting to the point where they're facing a crisis. And they're struggling to find the help and support that's available to them. Now, we just saw Well Aware, and that was great. I didn't know about it till this weekend. And it's really good in the fact that it is mapping some of the support that's available to people, but it's mapping it based only on people who've got to the stage that they're really looking for it. You can actually help to avoid that by bringing it together in a slightly different way. Did you know that there are nearly 200,000 registered charities across the UK? And yet until now, no one has brought them together in one place so they can be searched for based on location. Yet you could go to Google Maps and you could find a hotel or a restaurant anywhere and you could then make an informed decision, but you can't based on help and support that's out there for you. So Adodo aims to bring together those charities in one place. And initially it was worked on just wanting to help people in crisis find that help and support when they needed it. But when we were doing our research, we spoke to hundreds and hundreds of people across the UK who said, actually, exactly the same data will help in other ways to connect communities. So say there's somebody who's got time and wants to give support. They could find what projects exist out there so that they could go and volunteer. But think about that a little bit deeper. There might be somebody who's facing isolation and they don't really think they need help and support, but they're just feeling isolated. But if they were encouraged to go to a dodo, they could find the projects in their community that need help and support. And they're they're, Carl oh, has me stumbling on my mask under. What they're doing is they're fulfilling the need for the fact that they don't want to be isolated anymore, but they're going out and they're making a difference in their community. They're making new friends, they're expanding their horizons. They then maybe never need to go to the doctor or to the hospital for stress or depression. It never gets to the point that it gets to crisis point. You've actually fixed it before they really needed, they knew it needed to be fixed. But also, those projects in that area, so another use for exactly the same data, would be to actually help projects that exist already to connect and share, to collaborate, to share tools, resources and strategies, and therefore avoid duplication, but be more effective in the help that they do give. And lastly, but by no means least, just for this point, because there are other uses as well, it would encourage local businesses to support local projects. And this project, obviously, everything would be free for people to use. So well aware at the moment. Now I don't know how that's funded within the community but my guess from looking at it this weekend it looks like it's pretty much a, a template of something that's perhaps a service provided by somebody that maybe needs to be funded on a yearly basis with a subscription fee or something like that and the website can be made to look. That's what it looks like. I may not be correct on that. A dodo with exactly the same information but linking communities in more ways than just one would be a free service for Bristol. We'd like to use Bristol as our hub for starting this off. We'd like it to be our core area because so much is going on with technology in this area. And so that would mean you didn't have that annual subscription fee, but you were also linking communities in other ways. You were helping businesses to support and all sorts of other bits and pieces that are being spoken to. But there is so much more. Now there is a business plan for this, and that's to launch something called the Community Pledge, a membership platform for small to medium businesses, and there are 4.8 million businesses that have nine or fewer employees across the UK. Charge them an annual membership of roughly about £350. Immediately their membership fee funds a dodo. But at the point where we make profit, that profit can go back into communities. It would be self-sustainable with less than 2,000 members, and with about 7,800, it would have 3.2 million to put back into communities. So not only would this service be free for Bristol to use, with no annual running fee, it could actually then help to put money back into the communities as well by connecting them one click at a time. These ideas have gone even deeper this weekend, and I'd like to pass you over to Simon to some more, for some more of them. 
Hi, I thought um, I'm not directly involved with, with Jackie's project, so, so, so my presence here today really, um, talking about this, is just to give you uh, my response to it and my view about it. Um, I'm quite well aware of Bristol Health Partners' three strategic areas of, of projects, um, and I think this particular project of Jackie's um, very much fits under the using data better uh, sort of uh, headline. Uh, for me, it's doing a number of things. It's about bringing, bringing data about organisations and people who want to help their community together in one place, where individuals who need help can, can get access to that help very quickly. And, and the key thing there is quick access. I think that's what's often lacking for people who need help. Um, it's about making it accessible to those people. But above all, it's about getting the most value out of that data. And, and, and I think the thing that Jackie's spoken about this weekend to me that, that really resonated with me was was how this, this, getting this service up and running can actually get people more involved in their community, people with problems, more involved in their community and actually contributing to solving other people's problems in that community. And, and for me, that was a really powerful sort of aspect of it, which uh, I really wanted to highlight. So. One of the things that John talked about just now is actually making the data, I suppose, clever in a way that it's actually being pulled from... In fact, John, you're probably the best person to explain what you were talking about just now and how you were saying that this can actually help and support with bringing the data in and keeping it accurate and up to date. A very quick one before I go is one thing people have said about mapping information is it's quite hard for keeping, making... How do you know that that charity isn't a year old and it's out of date and they're no longer helping? The idea is that with the pinpoints on the map, if they've got a green rim around them, they've been updated in the last three months. If they've got an amber rim around them, they've been dated in three, the last three to six months. And if it's a red rim, it's six months or more. But that way, people can see how active the data is. And in time, what it will do is it will help us to encourage the charities and the community projects to keep their data up to date. Because by the feedback of information, it will help them to gain funding by proving their social impact, because there'll be feedback on there as well. Great. Thanks, Jackie. So a, a proposal in the strategic uh, proposal documents that, that's going to be added is about integration of mapping, be better value. We've heard about My Wild City. There's well aware, fi well aware findability and go places to play all process Bristol City Council data and its FocusGov is a private company that delivers that. It would be possible to integrate these different mapping initiatives and more in a way that would save time, money and increase accessibility. Yeah, so probably enough from me on that. So thank you, any questions? Do you all want your coffee? <laughs> yeah. just, I know, it's just very clean. Yeah. A, a quick one. Um, I mean, a challenge for a lot of these good things that we want to do, this, um, this sort of uh, turf um, and, and a certain amount of competitive element uh, around sort of uh, um, having a certain area and, and resources or access to those resources. Do you think there's a challenge with, with this in terms of um, sort of the fact that uh, certain providers or certain charities are in fact in, in competition with each other? Let's be realistic. I think there's always a challenge with anything that you do that's a bit new and that um, aims to be potentially positively disruptive and doing things slightly differently. We can all come at things and be based in these silos and get stuck in ruts of what has been done, it doesn't necessarily mean that what has been done has worked 100%. And I think that where I'm coming at with this is the fact um, things haven't been working. I mean, I've spoken to thousands of people, literally, but I, can, I could give you 10 user stories straight away of people who've struggled with going and finding data and finding information. And but part of their struggle was the fact that they didn't really realise until it was too late they needed help and support. So yes, I think there will be a challenge, and I've actually experienced challenge down in, in, in Devon with an organisation that is funded by the government, is a, is, has some, government, has some fund, funding by the government, and I won't name them, 
but they were really enthusiastic about this idea. And then somebody further up the line realised that it could prove to, to be a bit of competition, maybe. And so whereas they were working with us and helping us to find funding and different bits and pieces, they were then told they weren't allowed to unless they took over the project. Now I take that as a compliment, because if it's that threatening, then it means that perhaps we're onto something. And I also believe we're onto something, because when I very first had the idea um, three years ago, was when I first had the idea, we put it in the Richard Branson and Virgin Unite Challenge to Screw Business as Usual, with a competition from ideas from around the world. And this idea of a dodo was voted third from ideas from around the world. And that's the type of feedback. And there are people in other countries waiting to see what happens with this so that it could be replicated in other countries as well. And that's why it's called a dodo, because it's, it's not an actual word. But a dodo stands for one deed, one day, one world. Because actually together, if we make these small changes, and if we do do the things that are difficult, and maybe have a little bit of people pushing back at us, we can actually start to create change. And I believe that we can create change from a gra grassroots level, because it's the unsung heroes that run those community projects that are making the difference on the ground. And if we put in that infrastructure that actually helps to get that out, we're starting to create change from the ground up, and then working together with health partnerships and everything else, then we can bring it top down. And then we'll meet in the middle, we'll be working on it together but communities are taking responsibility for the information and the data that's up there. So I do think there's a challenge, yes, but I don't think it's insurmountable. I think there's also a real opportunity, opportunity here to, to, to get people more engaged with, 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 help, with helping their communities. That's, that's, that's one of the big values I see out of it. If you, it starts to take off, then people are going to get much more engaged by it. And, and ideally, the sort of scenario we're looking for is where those who are, who are looking to it for help may actually see opportunities to help. Which, and then, which then becomes a helpful, a helpful sort of therapy for themselves as well. So. so just to illustrate a bit more, I don't know how many people know about the Bristol Aging Better um, project, but there's four areas in Bristol doing great trailblazing stuff and giving those projects visibility and connecting the other projects going on in the city is a, is a real challenge. And if that is going to be mapped, why not have that uh, using the not using the same infrastructure technology to bring the costs down for, for the people using it as My Wild City and as the other sort of services to plot walks or Marcus Grant's thing to comment on the local, local areas. Yeah, I think, uh, I think for me, you know, I'm looking for the Bristol flavour. I think, I mean, sorry that the picture on the, on the map that shows sort of Dornish and bits and pieces where I actually live and I never even thought, in fact I didn't know on Monday when I came up to Bristol because I live in Dornish but I spend my weeks up here, I didn't know on Monday that I was coming to this. So I haven't actually had a, ta a chance to change that but that can be changed very easily, it's just one little graphic that I can change. Um, so I can make it ha show Bristol, <laughs> okay very definitely. But we'd like to, I think there's such a hub of activity going on up here. And I'm based here during the week times, and actually Bristol is where I'd like to start. The, I'd like to start a bubbling up in Bristol, a bubbling up in Bath, and a bubbling up in Devon. But Bristol's where I'm focused in, during the week. It's where I am, so it's where I can have the best connections now. Okay, that, 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 yeah, that's helpful, but you know, obviously it's more than just changing the map. It's, yeah. it's uh, you know, it's the thinking, it's the culture, it's the lesson of it's what, yeah. you know, how it's going to make a difference to. But I think by its very nature, it's, it's designed to have a local impact. Thank you very much. So for um, our energy's sake, I think, moving on, because there's one, there's one more presentation. That's okay. So thank, thank you very much.